everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build Series. You've likely seen our next guest, Rodrigo Santoro, in Westworld 300 and Love Actually. Today, he's here to talk about his latest project, Reprisal, where he plays Joel, the de facto leader of the criminal gang, the Banished Brawlers, who's trying to maintain order in a lawless world while raising his young daughter. Take a look. I said, you look fragile. Maddie. This is your candidate. Take him back. Do your thing. Come on, kid. Put your hands together for Rodrigo Santoro. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. I see you trimmed your beard up a little bit. I have. Yeah. Nice yeah. and clean cut. Yeah. Uh, I had not seen you like that before. Kind of that. Like... I haven't seen myself like that. Before. Really? Yeah. It was. It was wild. It was appropriate for for the character. It took me three months to grow it. Really? Yeah. And it's high maintenance. <laughs> I, I appreciate people that keep it because it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Did you have to research like beard oil and all that? Well, stuff? yeah. I mean, the makeup department uh, helped me out with that. But, you know, basically you have to take care of it. You have to wash it, yeah. groom it, you know. Um, even though he was, he's a wild man, so I didn't have to put too much product on it. It was more like the way it was. It, it just did work. Yeah. You mentioned he's a wild man. We'll, we'll get more into Joel, but I want you to set up the premise of this show because I love a good femme fatale story and it kind of got me from the first, like the opening scene. So can you kind of break down the plot a little okay, bit? Okay, yeah, femme fatale. I'm going to go with that. Okay. So um, it's like a, a hyper noir story that follows this relentless femme fatale who, after being left for dead, uh, sets out to take revenge on her own brother and his gang of uh, gearheads it's um it's it's pretty much i think reprisal uh it's a vengeance story that revolves around the theme of family yeah. uh the one you're born into and the one you find along the way you know um that's that's sort of like the log line and the the the, the show explores like all these incredible interesting dark characters that have done a lot of stuff in their past um and the show explores you know, why they they made those decisions and so on. It's one of those shows where you quickly learn that everyone is capable of anything. Humans, right? Yeah, humans. Uh, and one of those characters is who you played, Joel, and he, um, I'm two episodes in, All right. and I am very excited to see where he goes because um, he seems to be on this, you know, he's the de facto leader and he's kind of responsible for doing some bad things, but he does seem a little conflicted and he seems like he has yeah. some depth. So yeah. what can you tell us about him and the journey he's on? Well, I think the basic, uh, the main conflict is that he's, he's, like you said, he's the de facto leader of this group called the Banished Brawlers. He's trying to maintain uh, order in a lawless world uh, while raising uh, a young daughter. That's where the conflict comes in, and some stuff that, uh, spoilers, no, no spoilers, <laughs> something he has done in his past that uh, he will have to, um, spoilers, I can't, okay. I can't go further. Uh, basically, the conflict comes from everything I just said, but basically, the stuff will come up. Uh, and he will have to deal with it, stuff that is haunting him from his past. That was a really good answer with no spoilers. Thank you for Okay, that. thank you, because yeah. I don't like to spoil. That's no, the beauty I know. of that, you know, and I, I think especially with a show like this where there seems to be a lot of twists and turns already. Oh, a lot, a lot. You yeah. know, I think a spoiler would kind of maybe yeah, make Yeah, no spoilers. Um, so let's talk about preparing to become him, because I know you did some research. You went to Brazil and yeah. trained a little bit. I had to train. You know, I'm not a... I'm not a fighter myself, never been. Uh, uh, Joel is a ex um, bare knuckle fighter, a champion. So he, that's his backstory. Um, and he's gonna be involved in a lot of action in, in during the show. So I had to research and, and learn. I worked with a couple of guys in Brazil. Uh, I don't know if you know, familiar with, but Brazil has big culture on uh, jujitsu and a lot of uh, fighting. 
Uh, so I had to uh, learn and, and research all that, not only learn how to fight, but also learn the world, you know. Uh, and also those groups, you know, the Benish Brawlers are a, a nihilist group. Uh, we call them a gang, but a gang just doesn't define what it is. It's just a group of guys that are together in the name of uh, a deep uh, brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think the show also explores the desire to fit in mm -hmm. that we all have. Do we want to belong to something? And, and we, that's what we, we discuss in this show um, a lot. Uh, but I did, I did take some classes. I, uh, I trained a lot with those guys. Uh, What's a lot? I want to know like how rigorous, because that sounds exhausting. It's essentially like MMA type of fighting. It's well, grappling and hands-on. Well, yeah, I try to. MMA nowadays describes it's a mixed martial yeah. arts, so which is a little bit of everything, and that seemed appropriated for you know if you want to get a understanding of you know a notion, a basic notion. Uh, that's a great way to start. That's what I did. Um, a little bit of boxing, Muay Thai, uh, you know, grappling, wrestling all those things, um, and it was great because, you know, when you look from far away, I remember watching, you know, fights, and and I would look from far away and say, wow, my God, how, why did they do that? Why? I mean, but now, you know, getting close to it, you understand they're athletes. They prepare like athletes. They're, there's a lot that go uh, behind the preparation for a fight, the way they, you know, there's like codes. There's, there's a lot that... You, you know, only when you get close to it and, and talk to people and try to understand what their reality, you know, is that you, you can fully understand and not judge from far away. Yeah. So that was, uh, was very important to me just to understand the world. Yeah. And this group, uh, they're, you know, they're the brawlers, right? Highly physical group. There's a lot of aggression. Did sort of getting into that world sort of help you get into the mentality of uh, like gang that gang mentality where they have to like fight to survive and yeah it's it's survival is definitely a word that describes but i, I was more into the brotherhood i was more into i mean uh, joel the character i play it's, it's somebody that didn't that have no one in his life and needed to find something and he found a family in the in this group of people so it's more about those relationships than the uh, the aggression the, the violence and all that it's there yeah. uh it's part of it but my focus it was always about you know what's his conflict how can he raise this young child uh you know in this environment and how can he be the leader of this group um, and at the same time trying to maintain, you know, peace and order. So it was all, all those conflicts that interested me much more than just the actions. Yeah, I do love the, hello. <laughs> um, I do love the duality of him because he's in this world of, you know, somewhat toxic masculinity at times, and then right. he goes home and he has a right. little girl and he has right. to be a parent. And I yeah. feel like that sort of starts trickling over maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure yet, into his world of, he's a little less likely to fight or... Yep. At least in the, in the beginning. You, you need to get through it. You're going to understand yeah. why. Okay. There's, it, will, it, will, it will be explained uh, in a beautiful way. Yeah. So I think just keep going. You're on episode two? Episode two. Okay, keep going. Uh, you said beautiful way. The entire show is beautiful. The cinematography. Yeah, it's pretty. The set design. Yeah. I mean, I was reading an interview with uh, the show's creator, Josh Corbin. Yep. And he was saying that he was very influenced by Tarantino. He very much. And you can feel those sort of vibes in here of like Kill Bill. And, right. Um, so just what was it like for you stepping into this world and kind of seeing the finished product? It's amazing because I remember reading it and it's just great writing when I read like Right away, I, I was fascinated by the writing. Uh, and then, you know, the part, you know, it, it, it's kind of role that I've never played before, like far away from my own reality. That's why I had to research and, and, and all that. So it was a challenge, an interesting challenge. But also the world, you know, when we got the, uh, the Bible, which they call the Bible, you know, all the references, this show has a sense of fantasy to it. it the place, the time, it, doesn't actually exist. Very ambiguous. Yeah, it's very ambiguous. Uh, and it's like uh, some moments were pulled from different different moments in time. There's references from the 20s, the 50s, the 80s. So I was like curious to know how all of that is gonna, you know, play together. And when I watched the show, I binge watched just yeah. last Saturday. 
I was just, I couldn't speak it because it, it really works well. And it's it's a particular world. You said Tarantino, it's a big reference yeah. for, for our creator. There, and now people are saying it's like if Tarantino and David Lynch yeah. had a meeting, a <laughs> coffee, and you know, that came. This is their baby. Their baby, there you go. Um, I love it. I, yeah. I think it's it's really interesting and it's and it's really, there's a lot of substance there. There's a lot of, you know, the characters. Yeah. I really care about the characters. Is an ensemble? You, we have like all those characters. You're gonna get to understand all of them. Yeah. Uh, we just keep watching. See, I was gonna ask you what the time period is, but I guess there isn't one because you know there's flip flow phones, but then they use pay phones. Yeah. Then uh, there's like a burlesque sort of world in the bangerang, and yep. the yeah. cars are super retro. Are you yeah. a car guy? Um, not very much, but. Since I've been doing the show, I'm starting to yeah. yeah to to understand a little bit more. I would imagine the car fans probably love it because of the, oh, yeah. the scene. I think in the first episode, they're all driving down. I was like, this is beautiful. Amazing. They're vintage hot rods. Yeah, but not like the hot rods you've. It, they're they have their own style. Yeah, it's and it's they're not super glossy. Not they're at all. Very not at all. And like old old fashioned and and really cool. Yeah. You mentioned the cast. The cast is super dynamic. Abigail Spencer. I, oh, yeah, she's great. She oh, she doesn't even have to say anything, yeah. and she just has that intensity. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like working with this cast? I haven't seen any scenes with you two yet, but... We haven't worked yeah. together. No. Yeah. Uh, she's amazing. It. I mean, we have an amazing amazing cast all the actors that play you know character actors that come in and out yeah. they're just amazing like i said i was watching the whole thing and i was like wow i didn't know you know you you read the character in, on paper but then when it comes to life it's a whole different story uh i'm just very very grateful to to have the opportunity to work with this caliber of, of yeah. talent it's it's really outstanding the cast is really outstanding it's super impressive and i always am fascinated when i read that an actor is on two shows at the same time <laughs> because this seems like a full i mean you're in every episode and it's a heavy pull yeah. but you're also on westworld which we know is coming back for its third That's season right. next year right. yeah. um so what is it like kind of going in between joel and hector two guys that are both kind of dark but in a very different way very different way well hector is a is an ai is not a real person yeah. uh so it's but i remember going back to that to shoot uh, uh westworld and well, it's, you have to set your mind. It's a completely different story, completely different world, and completely different character. Yeah. Um, it, 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 was, it was challenging, but it was actually good because I stepped out of Joel for a couple of days. Hector, I've been living with Hector for a couple of years. Joel is new for me, so I kind of like stepped into Hector for a couple of days, and then when I, I could put in perspective, you know, like what what is that world that I was working on uh, uh, with uh, Reprisal. So when I came back, it kind of gave me like a, almost like I'm, I was recycling my own instrument, you know, my, my mind, my emotions, my body. So I came back like kind of fresh. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was actually very interesting. Was there an adjust, adjustment period, though? Yes, yeah. yes, for sure. But it wasn't too complicated. That's what I'm saying. It actually yeah. worked well. Yeah. What is it like uh, living in a, a character like Hector for so long? Because he's a man who really has no limits. He can do whatever he wants, and he does a lot of bad things. He dies a lot. He dies a lot. Back. I mean... As I've died on the show <laughs> more times than I've died in my whole career, you know, in, in any other project. <laughs> I've, like, he literally... Uh, but then it comes back to life. Right. That's the beauty of it. Um, it's an experience, it's hard to describe, you know, because I've never played an artificial intelligence before. I've never played anything like that. I'm learning about Hector as we go. You know, it's not a character, there's no backstory. I mean, there's a lot of backstories, but they were all, all programmed, and he doesn't remember. Well, mm -mm, spoiler, the, what just he doesn't remember. <laughs> uh, eventually, there's going to be some, some memory coming back. Yeah. Uh, but it's about that. It's about trying to, uh, is he aware, is not aware, what he's going to do with that once he's aware. Um, there's, uh, season three is going to be amazing. I was going to say, is there anything you can tell us about season three as far as something that got you excited or, uh, I don't know, maybe a new cast member joining or anything? We had a new cast, uh, there's two a couple new, new cast people, members. Yeah. yeah, a couple people. They're all great. Uh, um, but... Can't talk much about yeah. it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it's really different than anything you expect. 
it's really different than the way season two ended. You can't tell what's going to happen now. It's 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 very exciting. It's very it takes to a different level to a different place. And that's about it. That's fair. Uh, and I've seen you play a couple kind of darker, villainy sort of guys. Uh, what is it that you, for you as an actor, for like getting into their mentality, do you have to humanize them? Like, what kind of work do you do? You know, because these are like bad guys, but nobody's fully bad. All the there time. you go. You just yeah. answered. Uh, uh, the, nobody's just bad or just good. Yeah. There's a lot of gray areas in every human being, right? Um, humanizing is very important because otherwise you're going to fall into a kind of like a stereotype or a caricature and that's never engaging that's never you know people don't relate to it so the the, the basic is just to to build a human being you know portray a human being um, it doesn't matter if it's a called a villain or an antagonist or a, a good guy or a bad guy. Those are all just labels that we have to put just to describe. But at the end of the day, it's about what what is that? You know, what's the conflict? Yeah. What is what is it going through? What's what he wants in life? Uh, his insecurities, his his uh, you know dreams or uh, his obstacles, and and there and so on. So it's I, that's where I focus on. It doesn't really matter. Villains are. Uh, fun to play. Uh, somehow there's, you know, there's a, an excuse to go to darker places that usually you don't allow yourself to go, uh, morally speaking. Uh, but I don't have a, uh, you know, I, it's not like I prefer to play one or the other. I just like interesting characters that have depth. Yeah. Is there, uh, or what character so far in your career have you played that you really enjoyed digging into and bringing to life? Because you've played a lot of really notable roles. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Joel. Joel. Yes, and I'm not saying that because I'm promoting uh, reprisal. It's because it, it has been a very intense journey uh, and the character does have a great arc. Mm. It's just the first season, but I binged watched uh, uh, last Saturday, like I said, and and I saw it happening, and it was beautiful to watch. Uh, you know, the it's always nice when you see, when you witness a transformation, yeah. and when you witness change, when you witness, um, you know, somebody evolving mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, and I think Joel has that, uh, and it's just the first season, so I was like, wow, that's that's really great. Yeah. I was very pleased. For viewers, that's always the best case scenario when you can see that arc. And I would imagine as an actor, it would suck to play an actor or a role that just never yeah. learned anything or grew. You have to find those nuances yeah. in there when they're not there. You still, your job is to humanize you know, the character and just uh, find uh, those little things that will, will, will just, just bring life to it. It has to be alive somehow sometimes you have a, you know it's there it's on the page sometimes it's not and you know you try to do your best yeah how much of joel was on the page and, and then how much did you kind of was a lot to him? Yeah. it was a lot already on the page i had great conversations too with with josh corbin which is the creator of the show uh and uh, but it was a lot already there he had planned you know this arc for the part but he was uh, very open to to hear what i had to say about the the I, I love when you, when it's a collaborative process. I love. I think that it's such a. It makes such a difference, because it's you know it's it's all about it's it's not just about actors and writers and directors. There's the whole crew. You know the the costume department, the makeup department. Everybody has something to add, and if you're able to accommodate everything, uh, you're gonna have a much more complex uh, portrayal and and much and richer uh, uh, result. I would say specifically on a show like this, where, as I mentioned, the, de the set design is beautiful and everything is so intentional, the costumes, the mm -hmm. what they wear, their mm -hmm. tattoos, I mean, all yeah. those little details do. They have stories, you know, yeah. it's not like, uh, let's, you mentioned the tattoos and every tattoo that Joel has means something yeah. specifically. There was a lot of work behind to say, I'm not just gonna put some tattoos to say, oh, he's the bad guy with the tattoos. No, every one of them, he has a couple, um, but every one of them have uh, a meaning and a, a backstory. And some of them will be explained. You will kind of get a, a hint of, oh, that's why. So, which I think is important because when you, I don't have a tattoo myself, but everybody that I talked to, they said, oh, I did that when, 
well, sometimes they're drunk and you just do it. But I did that because of that. So there's always something behind. There's a meaning behind. And there's, that's important. And for him, too, that brotherhood, I think the tattoos are very tightly linked to yeah, that. So especially the ones on his neck. Yeah. Uh, it's about the brotherhood. The ones on his arms, his body, it has to do with his daughter and some stuff that happened in his past. I look forward to learning more about those. All right. Uh, before we get audience questions, I have to ask about Love Actually because, <laughs> you know, it's Christmas time. It's something that is on TV, just yeah. literally on repeat. It's one of my favorite films. Uh, it's one of my favorite, too. Okay, I was going to say, it. what does it mean for you to be part of a film that now has that presence where it's like an annual Christmas celebration? Yeah, it's crazy. It plays every <laughs> Christmas. It's on TV, and it, it just keeps coming back. And I love it because I think it's, it's one of those films that you can watch many times. Yeah. It's a lot of different little stories. They're complex, they're, they're beautiful stories. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just, what can I say? I feel very grateful to be a part of it. I remember being, I think it was 2000, help me out. Three? Three? That feels right. 16 years yeah. ago. Um, it was, I remember very young and working with all those amazing actors that I grew up watching and just, uh, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Yeah. That's all I can say. And the storyline you're involved uh, with in that film is very, I mean, so sad. Nobody likes uh, the ending. Yes, it's unresolved <laughs> in some ways. Yeah. Uh, has there ever been talk of doing another Love Actually? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard and, and it would be interesting to see 16 years later, all those actors coming back and what happened to them, uh, but it never, it never became a reality. But I've, I've heard, you know, talks here and there, but nothing official or I don't know. And the movie, it became, like you said, it became such a, a favorite movie that when you're going to do a sequel, it's always, it's just delicate. You're going to touch that and what are you going to do with it? It's up to Richard Curtis, our you know writer, director, amazing, amazing human being, and, and such a talented artist. If he decides to do it, I'm up for it. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm up. For I it. love. To, I love to hear that because as much as I don't like messing with perfection, I would obviously love to see a sequel. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep my fingers crossed. Cool. Uh, in the meantime, we'll go to some questions. The first one comes from right. Twitter. David Daffin asked, when you were training in Brazil, did you uh, train at any legendary clubs such as Nova Uniao or any specific fighters? All right, David. Uh, is he from Brazil? Um, Are you not, from Brazil? Really knows the no. fighting world. Uh, but you know the world. Okay, yeah. yes, uh, David. I trained with Milton Vieira. Uh, which is a great fighter, and uh, and Anderson Silva, the spider, which is a very, very known fighter as well. They both helped me out a lot. Wow. Did you get to, I mean, spar with them a little bit? Um, a little bit, but, you know, not really. They took it very easy, you know. Uh, they, they can't hurt me, otherwise I'm not able to work. But, but yeah, we did a little bit. Okay, yeah, really cool. It was exciting. That is awesome. Uh, where's our first question? Right there. Uh, my name is Marissa. And first of all, congratulations for your job. Bicho de Sete Cabeças and Carandiru was amazing movies. Cool. You're Brazilian. I'm Brazilian. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And homie. <laughs> huh? You're a homie. Yeah. And I'm so excited to watch Reprisal, too. Cool. Talk about your career. You did a, such a great job in Brazil. You have a nice career over there. But you came here to fight for your international career, and you did fought a lot, and you're doing great. Until now, about your international career, what was your finest moment here? Ooh, that's uh, tricky. You know, it's funny, because I've, I've never planned a career outside of Brazil. It kind of started to happen as a consequence of the movies you just mentioned, Bicho de Sete Cabeças. Here it's called Brainstorm and Carandiru. Uh, for American audiences that never uh, seen this film, you can look it up. They are very, very interesting films that crossed over and went to film festivals, and that's how I started working abroad. Um, I always see, um, uh, you know, I don't s separate uh, international career from national career. It's like a one road that has turns in and ups and downs, and I just, you know, keep taking it as. Uh, challenges uh so uh, for me you know the fi it's so hard to pick like a finest moment i would say um the only moment that i really have is right now 
because the past is back there and the future is not here yet. So it's it's what I have. So I would we'll call it now. Just be sitting here and talking about uh, a great show that I'm really proud. Um, but I guess it's a it's a daily process, right? It's you. I, I just I've I've never feel like I reached a place that oh yeah, let's sit back and relax. Just I, I always like to challenge myself, just because I think that's the way to grow. That's the way to evolve. I want to keep evolving as as a, as an actor, but also as a person. You know, this this job that I do, uh, acting is a it's a very interesting craft to develop. Uh, uh, you know, your humanity as well, because you learn about people. You learn how to not judge people. And we do that all the time. We judge. We judge. We have opinions and we have a lot of. So uh, it's great to be able to research and get close to, you know, new worlds like I just described about, you know, the fighting world and now understanding. You learn to respect uh, the differences. And, and that's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hi, I was wondering um, if you had the opportunity to work with anyone living or dead, who would it be? If I could choose? Yeah, if you had the opportunity to, to work. work like pick somebody to work with? Yeah, living Ooh. or dead. <sighs> My God, uh, there's just so many talented people that I would work with. Oh my God. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, sharing a scene with Mary Streep. I wouldn't mind that Who at is all. She? Mary Streep, she's yeah. a great American actress. Ah, okay. She's in a couple of movies. She won a couple of awards. She's kind of brilliant. Kind of, uh, you've never heard I'll about her? her Wikipedia, yeah. I'm on yeah, Google. yeah, Google her. Okay. Mary yeah. Streep. Um, yeah, she's, 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 she just blows me away. I mean, I'm not the only one. Uh, it's kind of obvious, my answer. There's a lot of great people that I would love to work with. Um, okay, I get one. Federico Fellini. That's an Italian filmmaker back in the day. He's not alive. He is alive through his work. But I would have loved to be in a Fellini movie. Yeah. Beautiful films. Really beautiful. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Very, very unique. Very poetic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love those films. Thank you. And we have one more. Or is that it? Oh, I could keep talking to you, but I guess we're done with questions. Oh, all right. But I guess if I want to see you, I can just catch out. I can watch the third, fourth, fifth. I have all the episodes of yes. of Reprisal to check out. Yes, please do. As you said, it just gets more intense and more yeah. windy after as we go. four people, after episode four going into five, it will just ramp up and it never stops. It, it will be easy to binge it. All right. I'm looking Promise. forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. You guys can check out Reprisal. It's streaming now on Hulu. And put your hands together for Rodrigo Santoro. Yeah.